Welcome fellow entrepreneurs to the Entrepreneur Adventure Podcast, where we talk about Amazon Wholesale and how you can use it to build an e-commerce empire, a side hustle, or anything in between. And now, your host, Todd Welch. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Entrepreneur Adventure. I'm your host, Todd Welch, and we are getting super close to the big holidays in Q4. My sales have just recently started spiking because Amazon is receiving in a lot of my product. Like I've talked about in the past, I recently got a $100,000 line of credit from a bank with an interest rate of 5.9%. Right now, it's a variable interest rate, so that could go up. But it allowed me to really stock up for this fourth quarter here, which is coming. Well, we're in the middle of fourth quarter, but the holiday shopping season, Black Friday and for Christmas is rapidly approaching. Now is the time that people really start buying for the holidays and things will just escalate as we get further in November and December. So Really looking forward to this fourth quarter. I hope you out there are stocked up and ready to go. If you haven't started selling on Amazon yet, definitely jump in as soon as possible. A lot of people think that, oh, fourth quarter is maybe not a good idea to get started. It is a really good idea to get started as soon as you possibly can. Don't get paralyzed because it's fourth quarter or information overload. Open your Amazon account and start selling one thing. I challenge you, if you haven't started selling on Amazon yet, open up your account and sell at least one thing by the end of November and get the ball rolling. You can listen to me on this podcast every week. You'll learn a lot of things, but until you actually do it, physically go out there and sell a product, buy a product and sell a product on Amazon, you're not going to really absorb everything that you need to know. You're constantly going to want to be learning, but you have to do as well. Learn one step ahead, learn what you need to do next, then do it, then learn the next thing and just keep going. I urge you to get started. Amazon is on fire with the pandemic, COVID, all that stuff that's going on out there. People are buying more online than ever before. And you don't want to miss this. This is one of the biggest opportunities we'll have in our lifetime. Amazon is starting to mature, but there's still a lot of room for more people to get into it and start selling. So I definitely urge you to do it if you haven't already. If you've been selling for a little bit already and you want to learn a new way to sell products, doing what I call the wholesale mine and refine, where I find these products that are collecting dust, clean them up and start selling them and maybe get 50 to 100 sales a month at 75, 100% ROI, head on over to entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash mine, M-I-N-E. And you can check out the masterclass that I recorded. It's only $47 right now as of this recording. So definitely go ahead and purchase that if you're interested in that at all. I highly recommend it. I've heard a lot of really good things about it. And I think you'll get a lot out of it as well. It's not for brand new people. You're going to want to already have been selling and know the basics. But if you already know the basics, this will be definitely a way to add on high ROI products to your wholesale catalog to boost your bottom line of your business. All right, if you want the show notes or anything else for this episode, go ahead and check out entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash 49, which is crazy. We're on episode 49. Next week will be episode 50, which is huge. 50 weeks of making this podcast, I should say. And this week, we're touching on a really good topic that I think can help you find more wholesale products to purchase and sell out there. And that is utilizing trade shows. A lot of people think that trade shows are a waste of time, but I have had really good luck with them. Other people have good luck with them. And I think 
you can have really good luck with them as well. Now, everything with everything, your mileage may vary. It depends on categories and things like that and how good of a personal communicator you are because the wholesale world is all about personal relationships and connecting with people one-on-one, whether you're connecting with the owner of the business, a salesperson, or whatever the case may be to get that account open, negotiate discounts, and things like that. So your mileage may vary, but I definitely recommend it. Trade shows, if you're not familiar with what a trade show is, it is essentially a show or a gathering of sellers and businesses in a specific niche. So for example, you could have a craft trade show. You could have a hunting trade show. You could have a home and kitchen trade show, or you could have a beekeeping trade show. It can really niche down like that. And basically the trade show company will gather a bunch of companies in that space that are selling their services, selling their products, and they will have a booth at the trade show. And us as attendees can go to the trade show, talk to the people at those booths, try to buy the products from them. A lot of times you'll have big trade show discounts and things like that that you can take advantage of if you buy right there at the show. But it's really an opportunity to get someone at the business, whether it's a a lot of times it'll be salespeople, sometimes it'll be the owner of the business if it's a smaller business, But you can talk to them and start that process of getting them to know, like, and trust you. And that is really what wholesale is all about. So this is an opportunity for you, if you're going to an actual trade show, to actually meet them in person, get to know them and talk to them about their products, and possibly open up an account with the business. And by going and seeing them physically, that can actually increase your chances. So like we've talked about in the past, a lot of people email to try to open accounts, right? Because it's easy, doesn't take really any work at all. Anybody can send an email, but they're also super easy to ignore. And that happens a lot. A lot of times businesses will just ignore the emails, especially if they think that you're an Amazon seller and not get back to you. The next step up from that is a phone call. You can call them on the phone. That way you can negotiate or or not negotiate, but navigate any of their objections, uh, maybe to having an Amazon seller or that they want physical retail. And you can try to get around those objections. So that is the benefit of being on the phone because in real time, you can try to get around those objections. And it's a lot easier to do to get around those objections than using email. Now, the phone call is harder, but you can navigate those objections and try to get around them on the phone versus in an email, you're going back and forth. There might be a day or two in between emails, and it's just a lot easier to hit delete on an email. It's more difficult. Uh, I don't think I've ever had anybody just hang up on me on the phone, right? Most people are not going to do that. They don't want to be seen as rude. They might tell you no, but they're not just going to hang up on you or yell at you or something like that. Now, the next step above the phone call is meeting people in person. So whether that is going to their actual business or going to a trade show. Now, if you're buying from people or businesses local to you, then going to their actual business is definitely a positive thing. You can go to their business, talk with them, maybe see their facilities and things like that and build that connection point. But a lot of times these businesses are going to be all around the country and you can't be flying around the country. You know, nobody nobody has that kind of money to fly all over to all these businesses, at least not in the beginning for sure. So that's the benefit of a trade show is you could literally have 50 or 100 or 300 or 1,000 different companies in one place. Now, one of the probably the biggest trade shows in the country is ASD. Market Week, it's called, and it's held yearly in Las Vegas. This is probably the most well known. And there are literally thousands of booths and companies there that you can go and visit. 
Now, ASD is really cool. I haven't gone myself, but I've heard a lot of people I might be going this year. This year, it's uh, February 28th to March 3rd in Las Vegas at the convention center. So I may attend this year to check it out, but I've talked with people who've gone in the past, and it can be very overwhelming, a large trade show like this. Trying to figure out where to go and what to do. If you're going to a big trade show like this, you want to schedule or plan everything in advance. You want to make sure you go through all the attendees, write down which ones you want to visit, maybe look them up on their website, look them up on Amazon, see if they have products that you can potentially carry or that you want to potentially carry and see if it's worth visiting their booth. Because at a big trade show like ASD, you're not going to have enough time to hit every single booth in the place. Because if you're doing this right, you might be at a booth for a half an hour or maybe even more talking with the people there, building the relationship, finding out information, trying to open up an account, maybe getting some big discounts and things like that. So you, you do want to be ready to make a purchase right there at the convention center, possibly. It doesn't always happen like that, but you might want to be ready. Now, a lot of times these companies will extend those discounts past the trade show. So you'll want to ask about that if you're not ready to buy right away, because obviously we need to look at things and check them out on Amazon and things like that. So that is a huge trade show, ASD. And it's a pretty cool one to go if you haven't experienced it. It can be a lot of fun from what I've heard. Like I said, I'm going this year. I'm going to check it out. You hear various things. Some people say it's not worth going to. Others say they found a lot of really good stuff. I think it really depends on how you plan and how you prepare for the show. If you're just going in there and with no plan and just going to start visiting booths, you're going to waste a lot of time talking to people that don't have products that you can sell and that are not worth you selling. But if you go in there with a plan, figure out which booths you want to go, have a map and go to the booths that you think are giving you the best shot to find good products and allowing you to open up accounts, then you're going to have success at these kind of trade shows. Now, most of the trade shows that I have gone to in the past have been smaller niche trade shows where there's like 50 to maybe 100 booths. And you can find these different trade shows by simply going to your favorite search engine. I use DuckDuckGo and searching for your niche and then trade shows. So for example, if we search for crafts trade show, you're going to find some different results. And I'll just do that right now on the fly. So if I search for craft trade show, I've got top 46 best rated arts and crafts trade shows, calendar of craft conferences and trade shows in 2020, arts and crafts trade shows. All right, so I finally found a good one here. So a lot of these uh, you need to log in or don't show me the information I'm looking for. So you got to keep searching here. But I found one from ntradeshows.com, craft trade shows in the United States. There's a list of eight of them. Um, we've got NAMKT, Smart Jewelry Show, Malibu Arts Festival. Uh, let's see. JA New York, Extracts. So a few trade shows here. And a lot of these are going to be smaller trade shows. And so you can go to them, and in these ones, you can probably hit every booth potentially, but you're still going to want to look at their exhibitors. And what's cool about a lot of these trade shows is they'll put their exhibitors, the people who are at the trade show, the businesses, right on their website. So technically, you wouldn't even have to go to these trade shows. You can just find the trade show's websites find their exhibitors list, and you might have 50, 100, or 1,000 different companies that you can now contact, ideally on the phone, if you're not going to meet them in person, and find products that you can sell on Amazon. So even without going to the trade show, you can get their exhibitors lists a lot of time from the previous year or maybe the current year, and use that as a list of companies that you can reach out to 
and open up accounts. So it's a really nice way for finding companies in a niche that you may not have already contacted. Maybe you didn't know that they exist. Maybe they're a new company with new products. You can reach out to them, start selling their products on Amazon, get an exclusive with them. You know, the the possibilities are endless. And once you find a trade show in the niche that you're looking for, if you're going to go to the trade show, like I said, prepare for it, go to it and start talking to the people at the booths. And the way you talk to them is going to be relatively similar to talking to them on the phone. Uh, you're going to talk to them about you know what kind of products they have and what's the process of opening up an account, what kind of discounts can they offer you, and things like that. At a trade show, talking about discounts is even more of a norm than just talking on the phone. So asking for discounts at a trade show is pretty much the norm. So you can get that a lot, a lot of times, big discounts at a trade show. Now, you might be thinking, Todd, you know, we're in the middle of the COVID pandemic going on. How many trade shows are there actually going to be? And that is debatable for sure. Right now, ASD, as I mentioned, is scheduled to go on in Las Vegas here in the end of February. So we'll see how that goes. But One new thing that is really taking the industry by storm, and I got the opportunity to go to one recently, is a virtual trade show. And if you've ever in the past played those like massively multiplayer online games where you create your character and you go in, right, and you're fighting the orcs and wizards and all that other kind of stuff... I was really into that stuff when I was young, like EverQuest and things like that. So I'm used to that kind of stuff. And that was basically the experience that I had in this online trade show. It was pretty cool. Basically, I registered in their software, downloaded and installed it on my computer, logged in. I created my avatar, which was a virtual representation of myself. And when the time came, I logged in went into the conference room floor and it basically was set up like a normal trade show. And I could walk around, run around, transport myself to different booths. And once I was there, the other person manning the booth would be there and we would have a conversation. And it was very much like a phone call conversation, but a little bit more casual because it it had a feeling like we were meeting in person, even though we weren't. So it was a little bit more than a phone call. At least it felt like it to me. And I was able to open several accounts from this virtual trade show. And I've got an exhibitor list and something that they called a green book with all of the exhibitors at the event, as well as everyone in the past and tons of other companies that are in this niche. And so I can go through there and contact all of them. Now, I found out about this trade show through a supplier who invited me. And so I went to the trade show. I was able to get into it. Now, normally they said I had to have a retail store in the beginning. I kept pushing them and they made an exception for me and allowed me to attend the trade show because of the crazy times that we're going through right now. And everything is moving online. People are buying more online. So don't give up if they say that you have to have a retail store. I think that's an important lesson on this. I didn't give up. I kept pushing them and trying to get into the trade show. And eventually they allowed me into the trade show, even though I don't have a retail store. Now, having a retail store is not a requirement for a lot of trade shows. So don't worry about that. But I think the moral of that story, whether you're trying to open up an account with a brand or a distributor or go to a trade show, if they tell you something, don't just take that as final. A lot of times you can navigate around these things and keep pushing to get the account open, go to the trade show and things like that. So the virtual trade show uh, was a really cool experience. And I had a really good time doing it. I found some good suppliers that I'm ordering from now and selling their products. So it was definitely worth it for me. 
And what was cool about a virtual trade show is it doesn't matter where they are, right? A physical trade show, if it's in Las Vegas, you got to fly to Las Vegas if you don't live there. If it's in Florida, you got to go there or wherever. But a virtual trade show, you log into an application on your computer and you are in the virtual trade show. It's not quite as good as being and communicating with someone in person because you can't see the way their body is communicating to you. Um, Communication is something like 70 or 80% body language and only like 20% the words that we're saying, even less than that with the words we're saying because another large part of communication is the tone of the voice, right? You can say the same thing three different ways and it's going to mean three totally different things depending on the tone of the voice. So body language is a big thing. You need to, you lose that in a virtual world, but it still allowed me to break down some of those barriers. I actually opened up an account with a distributor that was at the conference that normally does not allow people without a retail store. I was able to talk them into allowing me to open up the account because of the crazy times we're in. We're in a virtual trade show and everything. And I was able to get that account. So it was a lot of fun. Definitely look for virtual conferences and trade shows as well, I should say. And the same way we find normal trade shows, all you do is just add the word virtual. So if you're looking for craft trade shows, search for virtual craft trade shows. And now you're going to find some virtual craft trade shows. You might have to go through the first five to 10 pages to really start finding some good stuff. Don't give up on that first page. A lot of times the beginning results are going to be like indexes and uh, catalogs and things like that, that are not the actual trade shows. So sometimes you have to go to the second, third, fourth, fifth, 10th, 20th page. So definitely go down in the search results, but you'll find a lot of virtual trade shows are popping up right now. It's becoming a pretty big thing for obvious reasons, Um, but the real life trade shows are coming back as well. And as things start to move forward, I think we're gonna see a hybrid where you're gonna have maybe the once or twice in-person trade shows for a company, and then maybe they have one, two, three, four virtual trade shows, and you can attend either way. And it could become a pretty big thing especially as people are not you know, wanting to get together and things like that quite as much. So we'll see how ASD goes here. It's going to be interesting with everything going on, um, but it's definitely a way to find more suppliers. And that's kind of what this episode was all about, is to find more suppliers using the trade show system. Now, another thing you can do is search for trade shows in your state, especially if you live in a state with a big city, you're probably going to have some trade shows. Uh, Here in Utah, we have Salt Lake City, which is the surrounding areas, like 2 million people. We have a fair amount of trade shows, even in a city or an area of that size. So a lot of states are going to have trade shows. So for those ones, you might be able to even just drive to it. So you can search for craft trade shows in Utah or whatever state that you're in and find ones local to you, go to them and get those accounts open as well. That is the trade shows. I I hope that gives you some really good ideas on ways to find new accounts and open new accounts. It's one of the hardest things that new people have is finding and opening accounts with companies and utilizing trade shows, whether you go or not, at least go to their website and get that exhibitors list. And you're gonna have a list of companies that you can contact, try to open accounts. Remember, phone calls, a lot better than emails, in person, even better than phone calls. And if you're not an extroverted kind of person, you don't feel comfortable getting out there and talking with people, just know that you can break through that. You can get through that. You can change your personality in that way. I used to be really shy and I'm still shy. Most people laugh at me when they say I'm shy. I don't consider myself a shy person anymore because I made a decision that there was things in life that I wanted to do and being shy just wasn't an option. 
So I got out of my shell. I started talking with people, put myself in front of the camera right here or on the microphone and forced myself to start talking. You might stumble and feel stupid in the beginning, but you'll get better, you'll get better, you'll get better. And the person on the other end of the line is most likely not gonna care if you mess up. And if they do care, they're not gonna remember you a few minutes after you get off the phone. So don't worry about what the other person thinks. Just start making phone calls, go to trade shows, talk to people, get yourself out there, and you'll get better at it. Practice makes perfect. You'll get better, you'll get better, you'll get better. So that pretty much wraps up this episode with trade shows. If you have any questions or comments on trade shows, if you've gone to ASD, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you're on YouTube, if you're on the podcast, entrepreneuradventure.com and contact me there and let me know your thoughts. If you have any questions that you want answered on an upcoming podcast, again, remember to head over to entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash ask, A-S-K, and you can leave a voicemail there and I could answer that or I will try to answer that on an upcoming podcast for you. The show notes, entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash 49. And if you're interested in that wholesale mine and refine, entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash M-I-N-E to check that out. So with that, this is Todd Welch signing off. Happy selling, everybody, and have a great fourth quarter. This has been another episode of the Entrepreneur Adventure Podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow entrepreneur. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.